live painting session today um, and I'm going to be, um, I thought it might be interesting to show you how I go about mixing greens. Um, the, the tube colours that I use to mix my greens are a little bit different from um, some of the ones you might usually see. Let me just have a quick, there's just something I want to check quickly and see if it's working. Sorry, I'll just be a second. Hello, Karen. Nice to see you. See if it's... Sorry, I'll just working. Sorry, I'll just be a Just a second. Hello, Karen. Nice to see you. To figure this out. Working. And I'll be right with you. Just a second. Hello, Karen. I'm just going to... Um, Figure this out, Working. and I'll be right with you. Things are a little bit all over the place at the moment while I'm out. It's it's mostly to do with the. Um, and I'll be right with you. Things are a little bit all over the place at the moment while I'm out. It should be okay. Working. And I'll be right with you. It's mostly to do with the. Um, it's gonna. Um, it's mostly to do with the technology. I've had to change a couple of things. Um, with my setup, and I'll be right with you. Mostly to do things are a little bit all over the place. To do with the technology, I've had to change a couple of things. It's it's mostly to do with my setup. Sorry about that. Things are a little bit all over the place. Yeah, I've changed a couple of things with the setup because I, I use uh, basically this. I'm, I'm on a kind of um, an endless search to to have um, better, yeah, to be able to um, make better screens, better technology, better quality, I'm, I'm on a kind of, um, more possibilities for different camera angles. Um, and at the moment I have three different cameras going, which means that I can show you me, which you probably don't want to see, what I'm working on, power, what's in various configurations, and I'm going to add a fourth camera soon. So I can zoom right in on the painting, so every now and again I can switch to it, like a really yeah, close up, you know, which I think yeah, might be useful sometimes. Um, the downside is that means there's loads of technology involved, and sometimes I make mistakes, and sometimes it breaks. So everything feeds into a switch, or a kind of switch, or the camera's going to be a switch. And I show you the downside is that switch between them, which you probably don't want to see. My switch, bro. What I'm working on. Um, so greens, anyway. So I'm going to steam straight in. Okay, let me show you the cast. Sorry about that. Yeah, I should have sorted that out now, hopefully. A bit of bit of funny business with the um with the sound. Because I'm basically I've uh, I've kind of changed I've changed everything around. I've got a brand new switch. I've had to re-plug everything. And I'm still kind of figuring out if it all works or not. I think it does. So yeah, let me show you what I'm going to be doing today. So this is actually the subject that I'm working on today is um, from a, a live stream that I did last night, which is part of my Autumn Colors workshop. So if you're on that workshop, you will have already seen this study. Obviously, I'm not going through the whole study today. Yesterday was like a three, three and a half hour stream. Um, absolute troopers, uh, the people who were on the workshop stayed right through the stream and painted. Um, but what I thought would be useful, because today I need to finish this so that I can post it to the, we have a, like a private Facebook group for the workshop. And I thought this would be a nice opportunity to show you a little bit about how I mix screens. But I need the palette for that, obviously. So let's get the palette up. Yeah, sorry about that. I had uh, something funny about the audio. Should all be, hopefully, should all be fixed now. Let me just move this around a little bit so I can see all the messages. There we go. Nice to see you all. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed the session yesterday. I have to admit, I, I ended up being fairly tired by the end of it. So greens, okay. So I'm pretty much, basically this is a value study that I'm painting over. So the subject, you can see the, the, the subject down on the top right of the screen. 
Now that is actually a photo that I've put through Photoshop and I've, pix I've pixelated it. Um, so in Photoshop, there's a filter when you go into pixelate and then uh, mosaic. And the nice thing about it is it cuts all of the detail out. So obviously this workshop is, is mostly about these beautiful reds, greens and oranges and how to mix them. But let me show you <clears throat> some stuff about mixing greens today and how I approach them. It's probably going to be a fairly short session. We'll see, maybe a half an hour, an hour. I want to show you the tube colours that I use to mix the greens. So, first we have titanium white. Now, a yellow. You need a yellow to mix greens, right? But this is not just any old yellow. This is Michael Harding Bright Yellow Lake, and it's an aralide yellow. And the pigment is PY3. It's a very green yellow. It's a high value, high chroma, green yellow. But just for sake of comparison, I'll put some cad yellow out beside it so you can see the difference. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I, I was so tired at the end of that screen, that stream. I literally, I, I shut down the cameras. I cleaned my palette and my brushes. I had a bowl of soup and I went to bed. <laughs> but I really enjoyed it too. Um, <clears throat> but it was kind of long. So look, you can see the difference. That's a cad yellow. <clears throat> okay. And this is the aralide yellow. So <clears throat> I need a blue, right? Oh, what's this? Ivory black. Yeah. Ivory black is actually a blue. Let me show you why. <clears throat> People say don't paint with black. Well, if you want to make nice greens, I think it would help you if you have this handy. <clears throat> so let's take this off. I just wanted to show you that for comparison's sake. Let's not confuse the issue, huh? So if I take some of this aralide yellow, a similar pigment to this is Hansa yellow is PY74. Take a little bit of ivory black and mix them together. Ivory black is low chroma, low value blue. So <clears throat> this yellow is already tending towards green. So when I mix it with this low chroma blue, I get this beautiful green. The chroma isn't too high. It's tending slightly towards yellow and you'll find a lot. Now people talk about mixing greens and they'll have like, like get all your yellows out and get all your blues out. Cobalt blue, ultramarine blue maybe a lemon yellow and a card yellow. Well, I want to show you a slightly different approach. What we want in order to be able to paint realistically, we want to be able to control the value, the hue and the chroma. Yes, I'm talking about Monsal, okay? Hello, Daniel, nice to see you. So this is mid to low value. That's a nice green, you know, it's a pretty good green. But what if I wanted it to be more blue than that? I could add a blue, but what I will add is this is actually, this tube of paint is so old I've had to tape it up to keep it together, but this is Windsor Newton, Windsor Green Yellow Shade. It's basically a thallow green. Any thallow green will work. Pick up a little bit of that, like the tiniest little bit, and mix that in and see how the color changes. It goes towards a beautiful, more of a blue green. Let's get a little bit out to the side and put some more of this in. It's tending towards a blue-green, and for, for some rose petals, that's like, you want it to go more blue-green. You can see the difference between them? But I'm not losing chroma. The problem is if you use the standard blues and greens that people tend to try and use to mix greens, you end up with very, very little chroma. What's chroma? Okay. Just in case this is new to you, this is basically Monsal in a nutshell. There are three aspects of color that we think about. There's the value from light to dark. There's the hue, which you, you would say, that's the name you call the color, orange, blue, green. And there's the chroma, which people don't think about very much. So all of these are the same value. But this is a high chroma and this is low chroma. Another word you could think about for that, you could use for that is intensity. Intensity. So what you'll find is it's difficult to get greens intense enough to paint things like red apples and some leaves, especially in the lower values if you just use the normal blues and yellows. 
I'll get that off my palette before I wash my brush in it. What about if I wanted like the highest chroma green, like this is like an, an electric green. You know, if I get some of this Aralide yellow and put in some of the Thalo green, you're never going to need a chroma that high. <laughs> it's crazy. That's really, really high chroma. The only time you might want as high a chroma as that is if you're painting leaves and you have like light coming through the leaf because leaves are slightly transparent, you know, translucent. And um, when you get light coming through the leaf, you get this sometimes a really, really high chroma color. So you might want sometimes to really push the chroma up really high. That's a really high, it's a quite high value, but really high chroma green. There's no black in that one. Okay, that's just the thalo green with the aralite yellow. Actually, let's, I'll put out some, just for sake of argument, I'll put out some, um, if I can get the palette full screen, let's see if I can get the palette full screen. This will probably make more sense. Excuse me for getting in touch in, in front of the, um, let's see if the, if this is going to work. Yeah. Let's disappear this apple. Go away, apple. Now you can see more clearly what I'm doing. If I, you can use the Cajelo if you like, it just doesn't come out as strong. So say I had some ivory black and I mixed it with a Cad Yellow. These are all Michael Harding paints, by the way. <clears throat> it goes a lot more, it's more like an olive kind of a green. Much lower chroma. You see the difference there? So if you want this, to come out as a nice strong green, then the Aralide yellow is much, much better. But I could then put some, equally I could put some of the phthalo in and it would bring the chroma up. And it will send it more towards a blue green. It will also drop the value. Usually what happens if you don't mix things up to the same value when you're mixing them in, everything will change at once, the hue, the value and the chroma. I personally, I like these ones because I paint a lot of roses. You probably know that. And if I want to go like right down the value scale, let's get these out of the way. I don't really want those on my palette for the painting. More black, you know, and take a little bit of this green, take a bit of that one actually. More blue one and mix that in and I get a really, really low value green. That's about the best low value green you can get. Deep shadows. Um, I'm going to get a shot of this because just in case any gets on my painting, wouldn't want to spoil it. Irene, if you could use help with greens, you've come to the right place. <laughs> I, I see a lot of, uh, the reason I thought I'd do a little session just on this is but basically because these sessions that I, um, these sessions that I do impromptu live sessions, kind of Tuesdays and usually Thursdays. They're just like whatever I happen to be working on in the studio at the time. And I happen to be working on this today, this study and, and doing these leaves. So I thought it would be useful just to show you some quick stuff about greens. I'm going to paint some leaves as well, so you'll be able to see like uh, how I use them, you know. Clean up the palette a little bit. So Lynn said, blue green, what was that color? This one over here, it's Windsor and green, uh, sorry, Windsor and Newton, Windsor green, yellow shade. But it's just a thallow, it's a thallow green. Any thallow green will do. But often they're called Viridian or whatever. You know, I wish they would, paint manufacturers would just call them all the same thing. So if I want this to go lighter, I can just take the green and add more yellow. But what happens if I add more yellow is obviously it becomes more of a yellow green. If I want it to go up the value range without changing the hue too much, then I could add a white. Okay. 
So adding white, if I get some of this green with some white, this is titanium white, obviously is, is quite opaque. It doesn't affect the hue quite as much, but it does drop the chroma quite away. But that's actually useful, I think, when you're painting leaves, because if they're those kind of shiny, dark leaves that you get on roses, the, the light parts are kind of like a reflection, almost a direct reflection of the light. And, um, and they tend to be very low chroma. If I wanted to drop the chroma of these greens even more, by the chroma, I might, uh, you could say intensity. I know some people call it neutralizing, right? Now, I know you probably have heard, a lot of you will have heard that the best way to neutralize a color, people will say, or to drop the chroma is basically the same thing. They say to mix in the complement. If I mixed in a red into this screen, the hue would go all over the place. I'd lose control of the color. So if I want to drop the chroma of this screen, what I will use is, this is raw umber. I mix a very low chroma color of the same value and mix between the two. So if I get raw umber, bring in a little bit of white. And I want some black in there as well because raw umber is actually a yellow, a yellow orange. This will make it closer to a neutral. So let's say if I've got like a, a neutral color there, and let's get this green. They're about the same value. So if I mix some of this neutral into this green, I get a low chroma green. We're just dropping the chroma. We're not really changing anything. We're not changing the hue much. We're mostly changing the chroma. And it's a really good way to do what people call neutralizing, which is really is dropping chroma. It's a fantastic way to drop chroma, you know. I can drop it, keep on dropping it until it gets to the point where it's almost gray. Really fine control. So, you know, I basically got, you can see that's getting grayer and grayer as I mix more in. <clears throat> Oh, I will be doing another workshop soon, actually. I think I've just managed to find a source of David Austin roses, because obviously mine have finished now. So I think I'm going to do, in January, another flower painting workshop. <laughs> Kids are back. Kids have been out there. You might find a little bit of, uh, a little bit of noise. Can you, is the door open? Can you get in? All right, good lad, good lad. Um, <clears throat> so let me switch back so you can see the study again, huh? Um, I'm getting a bit confused about where I do what now. There's the study, yes, there's the study. There's the palette, yes, good. I'll put, I'll put the reference up as well so you can see. That should be okay, hopefully. Is that right? I think it's okay. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm still I'm still playing around. I've just completely changed the setup as I was saying, so I'm still playing around with it, making sure it's all right. Looks like I've got a bit of um. Having internet speed problems. My internet speed is coming up and down a little bit today. I don't think it's the I don't think it's the setup, I think it's my internet connection. Possibly. Hopefully you can still see me. Can you still see me okay? I think the stream is working, but it's a little hard to tell. For sure. Just two seconds. 
Sorry about this, I seem to be having internet connection problems at the moment. I wouldn't say you can hear me alright. I can see my, my internet is bouncing up and down though. It's a little bit worrying. Usually I manage to get like really good quality on these streams, but things are a little bit up and down at the moment, it looks like. Hello Mariana, nice to see you. Yeah, we're, we're, it's a little, it's looking very choppy for me. I'm not entirely sure what the problem is. I'm just trying to figure it out what it might be. I might have to stop the stream. I might have to stop the stream because I'm having... Hello <laughs> then. So for some people it's fine and for, some, for me I'm, I'm getting, I'm having a bit of trouble with it. It looks like it's, it's very, it's very choppy and it's coming and going. Difficult to say what the problem might be. But it looks very much like an internet connection problem. It looks good for some of you, does it? Ah. It looks it looks all right to me, but unfortunately, I can't. I can't see any movement happening. It looks very very choppy to me at the moment. But let me. I'll I'll just put a little bit of color on anyway, just to show you. Like um, here, this area here um, is like full shadow, very dark. So for this. You know, I can take the green that I've mixed here. If I wanted to make it a bit more of a blue green, I can add a little bit of the thalo. And I'm painting this over the existing study. So I'm just, all I'm really doing is adding a little bit of chroma and keeping the values about it, what they are. Yes, you could. Um, Kathleen says it seems easier to add a touch of raw umber. You could do that, but you, uh, without bothering to bring it to the same value. Yes, you could do that. Um, but the problem with doing that is that um, you will change the value as well. Sometimes by quite a bit. So the lighter part, as it comes out of the shadow and into the light, this leaf will come here. Yeah, I've got I've got almost no internet connection here. So I'm going to I'm going to leave the stream here. Hopefully that was enough to show you a little bit. Um, I'm having some internet problems that I'm going to need to figure out. Hopefully you can see me. Um, sorry about this. It might be something to do with the setup, but internet connection problems today. Um, I'm going to sign off now um, and I'll see you again. Hopefully on Thursday I'll be able to stream again. Bye for now.